Over time, my camera gear has steadily grown in size and weight. That hasn't stopped me from getting out there, but I started to realize that it was dragging me down while hiking. I was also afraid of getting hurt by carrying so much weight. So 2019 has become little by little my minimizing gear year. I embraced compact cameras and I just doubled down on that bet. Meet my newest camera, the RX100 Mark VII. So how did we get here? Well, I knew that going compact would be ideal for me, at least on paper, for what I do. I wanted to give this approach a try, so on this trip I only brought compact cameras with me. They are the RX100 Mark II and the RX100 Mark V-A. And they are a great combo, but I've run into some problems. The RX100 Mark II is my stills camera, and it's falling apart, literally. I had to replace the screen years ago, and I must have done a poor job, because it barely works anymore. The screen on the poor Mark II just died. Less than 24 hours after getting the Mark VII, I think it just got sad. But I wasn't going to replace you. I'm still using you, don't you see? I bring you to beautiful places. I kept using it without the screen and the images look lovely. And it's a very tough camera, it's working again. But it's just not the screen, the autofocus motor makes a very weird and loud noise. I'm afraid that this camera is going to stop working at any moment. And my video camera, the 5A, doesn't have a microphone input, which has made my video workflow much more complicated now that I have to synchronize the audio in post. A decision had to be made, and not an easy one. I started thinking more and more about the Mark 7, which seemed to be the perfect camera for me for both video and photos. There was just one big issue, and that was the price. So after days and days of overthinking, sleeping on it, I even had nightmares. Huh. Until one day, I need the Mark 7. There was only one thing left to be done, so I gathered the courage and I went for it. Rach? Yeah? I've been thinking. Just get the damn camera already. So I did. Then I patiently waited for a few days until it finally arrived. There it is. Seems like open to me. There are five, five things I was really excited about from this camera. Four about video and one about photography. I couldn't have chosen a worse or better day to try this camera out. First day with the camera and it's snowing like crazy. The first thing is the digital stabilization in 4K. This is something missing in the 5A. It was only available for 1080p. It does crop the image a little bit, but I think it's completely worth it because it makes for a much smoother footage. I find this very useful and not only for vloggers or for when you're recording and walking at the same time. This, combined with some additional stabilization in post, allows me to get very steady shots, almost like if they were taken from a tripod. All of these were handheld, even this one at 200 millimeters. It's also very useful for smooth panning and to get more cinematic shots, like you can see here. Thing number two. There is no recording time limit in 4K. You see, the Mark 5A has a five minute time limit when recording in 5K, which to be honest, has helped me a little bit because I'm more direct and to the point when I talk to the camera. But the thing is, the camera overheats and you have to wait longer and longer in between clips. And that kind of sucks. 
The Mark 7 though fixes this, so that's great. And it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. Ah! Thing number three, it has a touch screen. Sony's implementation of a touch screen is very poor. There is only so much you can do with it. But being able to change the focus point while recording video is extremely important for me and something that I was really missing from my bigger camera, the A6500. So I really appreciate this one. Despite this tiny size, this camera is very powerful and capable for video with plenty of features that much bigger and more expensive cameras don't have. Many people care about frame rates, about codecs, about the 4K, if it's downscale, if it's able to shoot in S-Log or other picture profiles. And sure, those things are important to have, but I believe that sound plays a much important role in our videos. I think we can all agree that good sound makes a huge difference. With these videos, I want to make you feel like you are here with me. I want to share the, my experience with you and sound and good audio plays a really important role. That's why I'm so, so happy that this camera has a microphone input. It only took them seven generations, but hey, it's here. If you're American in the living room, what are you in the bathroom? What? European. What do you say to someone who tries to steal your cheese? That's nacho cheese. Of course, theme number five is the unbelievable 200 millimeter lens that comes in this tiny, tiny camera. And I know, I know it's gone from 1.8 to 2.8, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's focus on the good side of this, that is the incredible reach that you are able to get. I guess that eventually I'll get used to it, but for now, every time I extend that lens all the way to 200 millimeters, my mouth just drops. It's just incredible that a tiny camera that fits in your pocket can do that. And sure, the image gets softer at 200 millimeters, but still, this will allow me to create images that otherwise wouldn't be possible because I didn't have the reach before, without having to bring a backpack with a bunch of lenses, of course. It could even be a good camera for wildlife, I guess. Before we keep going, I'm gonna show you a few images that I've made with this camera during the last couple days, of course, edited to my style. When I was thinking whether I should buy this camera or not, I had three main concerns. The first one is of course money. This is not a cheap camera, it's actually expensive for what it is. It's a compact camera with a tiny sensor, but it does a lot of things that other cameras can't. And in the end, it all depends on what you need, what the right tool is for you and for what you do. I believe that this camera is almost the perfect camera for me, for my photography and for my videos, but it might not be for you. 
The second one is the Boca. I'm recording this with my two cameras, the 5A and the Mark 7. And the lenses are different. In the 7 is a 2.8, in the Mark 5A is a 1.8. That not only makes it better in low light, but it also should make it better when it comes to blur the background. So, do you notice any difference? This, uh, the 7 is a 2.8, as I said, the 5A is a 1.8, I believe. Let me check. Yes, 1.8. Of course, the closer you get to the camera, the blurrier the background becomes. Another thing you can do is to get farther from that background, so it blurs even more. But no matter what you do, the wider aperture will always have the edge here and there is no way around it. I just don't worry too much about this. It is true that the 5A looks a little bit better, but I mean, the 7 is fine. When it comes to low light performance, I'm no camera tester. I try to compare the 5A and the 7 against the surface and you can see the results here. I don't really know what to say. If, if anything, the 7 looks a little bit worse. But they look pretty similar. They look just fine up until ISO 1600 to 2000, in my opinion. It gets worse very quickly from there. So, of course, the difference of one plus a stop on the lens of these two cameras makes a huge difference. If we are shooting at ISO 3200 on the Mark 7, we could be using ISO 1600 or even 1250 on the Mark 5A, and that means much less noise. But still, it's just one stop, and I think that low light capabilities are a little bit overrated. If we want to get good results in very low light, we need completely different setups. Bigger cameras, bigger lenses. For example, I have the A6500 back at home with my Sigma 60mm f1.4, and that combination has an advantage of more than three stops over the Mark 7. And not only that, but at the same ISO, it looks much better. So if you need the low light performance, this camera is not for you. But if your use in low light is more casual, like I do here, just for YouTube videos, because after all, for photography, we can always use a tripod. That is not a problem. Then this camera might be just fine. While these uh, cameras are very complete right out of the box, there are a few accessories that I think make them even better. The first one almost goes without saying, but you need a screen protector, just do it. The second one is a filter adapter ring that you'll have to glue to the lens of this camera. Out of the box, the lens can't take any kind of filters, and since this one doesn't have a built-in any filter anymore, it's almost a must if you're gonna do any kind of uh, video. The third one is, of course, an external microphone to take advantage of that microphone input. This is my favorite. It's a Rode Video Micro, and I think that the sound that comes out of this thing is very good. It doesn't use any batteries or anything like that, so it's pretty uh, easy to use. The only thing is that it's a little bit big. It's uh, almost bigger than the camera. So I got a new one. It's a Saramonic srxm one or something like that. It's much smaller and it's pretty convenient for this uh, camera. It's not as good as the Rode Video Micro in windy conditions, so you might want to get a windshield for that one too. And even then it's not as good as this one. So I want to have the option to use this one. I don't have a way to mount it and this is where the fourth and last accessory comes in and it's a cage for the RX100. I'm yet to buy that cage so for now I'm gonna show you the one that I have for the 5A. Unfortunately they are not compatible anymore. The 7 has a slightly thicker lens so this one doesn't fit on the new one. A cage like this will make your RX100 a much better camera and a much more versatile system. Not only they offer places to mount your microphones, as you can see here, they offer some extra protection, they have a grip, these cameras are not the easiest to hold, and they fix a very big design flaw in these cameras right here on the bottom. The problem is when you have this camera mounted on a tripod and you have a tripod plate here, you can't open the battery door, so you can't change the battery, you can't take the memory card out. But with this, you can attach the tripod plate here and you still have access to the battery door right here. So it's much more convenient. And now time for some Q&A. 
I asked both on Instagram and YouTube if anyone had any questions about this camera. Of course, if you still have more questions after watching this video, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Should I get this or the Mark VI? Well, I don't have the VI, I've never used it, but it looks pretty similar to this one. It looks like a very solid camera, but if you do need that microphone input, I could pay the 200 bucks. I think that's the difference in price. I could pay that only for the microphone input. Step-by-step -step instructions for long time exposure. Okay, I can do that, but not in this video. This has already been a long one. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do long exposure photography on these cameras. I've been doing it during this trip. Possible print size and quality with the smaller sensor. Someone was asking for a print sample uh, on YouTube as well. And I went to a pharmacy yesterday looking for something different, but they had one of those, you know, printing machines, vending kiosks, whatever the name is. And I copied a photo from my phone, printed that photo here, you can see it. This is the biggest size I could do. It's a 15 by 15 centimeters. I don't know how much that is in inches. And it's one of those instant images, so it's not the highest quality you can get. But in my opinion, it looks pretty good. I've actually printed before images that I made with my 5A and even with my phone. My prints are not too big. They go up to 8x8. I've done tests with 12x12 12 12 inches and I found these little cameras to be more than able to do that. If you want to go bigger than that, then I don't know. But up to those sizes, they look beautiful. Why not the Ricoh GR Mark III? Well, that looks like a beautiful camera and I actually I had it in my hands before. And it's something that I would really like to use. But my problem here is the fixed lens. I think that's a 28 millimeter uh, lens. You can buy some adapters or some converters to make it even wider to 21. By the way, you can buy uh, converters for this one too. I have one in the mail coming. Uh, I don't know what the equivalent uh, focal length will be, but I'm very excited to shoot wider than 24 with these little cameras. But anyway, going back to the Ricoh, as I said, it looks like a very solid camera, but the problem is the fixed lens. I really like the zoom lenses on this one and the range from 24 to 200 gives me a flexibility for the kind of photography that I do do outside in landscapes and stuff like that, that the Ricoh just can't give me. The Ricoh looks like a beautiful and perfect camera for street photography, just not for the kind of stuff that I do. Looks like it's windy. Love mine, been using them since the Mark One. How do you find the compromise between focal range and lens speed? Yeah, as I said, the lens has gone from 1.8 in previous versions to 2.8 on the Mark Six and Seven, so it's more than one stop slower, and that obviously has consequences when you're shooting in low light. You have to uh, crank the ISO or use a slower shutter speeds, and also the the bokeh, as you can see. Uh, if I was recording this with a 5a it would be more the background would be blurrier this comes down once again to your needs and what you're looking for in a camera this one can do everything i need to do 99 percent of the time of course if i'm gonna be doing some night photography or some low light photography then i would grab the 5a or even the a6500 because this one is not the the perfect camera for those conditions did you miss the all 24 to 70 so once again, this comes down to the speed of the lenses. I do not miss it. I really like the 200 millimeter reach of this camera. And I still have the 5A. So I use them both. And sometimes I even bring them both with me because they are so tiny that I can fit, uh, I can fit them both in my pocket. So it's not a problem. Why did you choose that over a full frame? Oof, that's a very big question that I think I should make a video about because I haven't shot full frame in a long time. It actually disappointed me when I bought the A7 II, I think it was. So I don't find that the image quality, the improvement in image quality is worth the extra cost, the extra size, the weight and everything. I really love the smaller footprint of these cameras. They are actually not as sharp as a full frame but I think that that renders a more beautiful image that goes more with my style because they look more like drawings or paintings. I know it might sound a little bit silly, but I find it to be true. And I like more th uh, that more than the crispiness or whatever you want to call it from full frame. 
Some more questions about the price. Is it worth the price? I'd say so. It looks like you get your money's worth having had the last one for so long. Yes, I do use these cameras a lot. I bring them with me everywhere. If I'm going out for dinner or to have a coffee, if I'm just going to the grocery store, they always come with me because they fit in my pocket. So that's the amazing thing about them. Why not the RX1 instead? It has better image quality. That is an amazing camera, but once again, it's a fixed lens camera. I can zoom in or out. It's a full frame camera, so the image quality I'm sure is amazing, but it's also much, much more expensive. What is it like to take photos with it in full manual mode? Well, I don't know because I shoot in P mode at most aperture or sharp priority, but I would say that not very easy because it has a very limited controls. It's a very tiny camera and they are tiny buttons and I also I, I just couldn't do it. Does it come with a built-in ND filter? If not, does it have any long exposure app setting that you don't need the ND filter for long exposure shot? No, it does not have a built-in ND filter, but that is a bigger deal for video or if you want to use wider apertures. If you want to do long exposure photography, you want to go for darker ND filters than the usual three stops that come built-in in cameras. You need to get standalone ND filters that you can put in front of your lens. I have a 610 and 15 ND filters, so that allows me to create very long exposures even during the day. Okay, it's been a very long video already. I don't usually do these kind of videos, camera gear review, first impression thing. So I really wanted to share this with you though, because I'm really excited about this camera. It's a powerful tool. I'm gonna create a bunch of images and videos with this one because it's gonna come with me everywhere from now on. I'm gonna be using it as a complement to all the camera gear that I already have. Not only my other compact cameras, but my APS-C and even my Bronica. So it's gonna be there with me all the time because it doesn't take any space in my backpack. And the good thing about these cameras is that when you buy it, you're buying a complete system. You don't need new lenses, you don't need anything. You don't need to carry with you the stuff to clean the sensor or anything like that. It's almost a hassle-free, it fits in your pocket, and as long as you have a space in your memory card and a fully charged battery is gonna do a good job no matter uh, what you throw at it. As I said, if you have any questions or if you have any comments or anything to say about this camera, please uh, leave a comment down below. And that's all from Italy. We got here yesterday to a beautiful town called Arco, just on the shore of uh, Garda Lake. It looks beautiful around here. Today we got a very nasty day, but I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to get out there in the next few days and create some uh, good images around here. If I do, they'll be coming to your screen very, very soon. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.